Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we'll be reviewing the Gichirori Wash Processed Kenya from Sweb and Coffee. There's the box right there. And Swebin, based out of Bristol, England. And once again, they were originally suggested to us by Yokata Yokata. So once again, a shout out to and thank you to Yokata Yokata for the suggestion. This is Swebin's third ever appearance on this channel, having recently reviewed the Pertucana, a natural processed Ethiopian coffee. And in that review, I'd mentioned that we were reviewing another coffee alongside that one, and it was a washed coffee. So of course it is this one right here, as this was a pretty good sounding Kenyan coffee. And I'm definitely looking forward to discussing this one as well, as this right here is day 39. And recipe we went with for this coffee was our standard recipe, which is a 16 to one water to coffee ratio brewed at 96 degrees Celsius, about 205 degrees Fahrenheit. And then like this one best through the V60, which indicates a more medium fine grind roast profile for this coffee. As we alluded to in our previous Sweb and review, they are definitely one of the lighter roasting British coffee roasters that we've reviewed on this channel. And this one is also a filter roast and it also felt a little bit lighter than the Ethiopian coffee that we had reviewed. Even then I would say that it's still maybe on the much more developed side of a light, if not maybe on the lighter side of that medium light in terms of that roast profile. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. Day 14, first impression, and we did opt for the V60, and it definitely had plenty of the expected Kenyan level of brightness with an abundance of the tar berries, as well as citric attributes right from the start. There is an extra bit of herbality and savoriness, everything that can be expected from a classic Kenyan coffee. Nonetheless, I found it to be a pretty good first impression as once again, I was just appreciative of the fact that Swevin does roast significantly lighter than so many of the other British coffee roasters. So having this first impression and experience from a British coffee roaster is always going to be on the more positive side of things. Day 17 through the Chemex and the cup is dramatically improved interestingly enough as there's a surprisingly nice level of clarity and cleanliness to the cup. The berry attributes felt a little bit more candied with slightly less of the herbal and savory components to them, though both are still notably present within the cup itself. Plenty of lingering brightness as well. So this was a pretty good day and honestly one of the better days of this coffee that I had had. And then you on to day 20 as we opted for the April Brewer and uh, once again it was pretty surprising how sweet and clean the cup was. Nice candied red fruit aspects reminiscent of what I would describe as that cherry fruit chew note that I'd like to describe for coffees. Entire cup seems reminiscent of what I would say is cherry limeade so this was another really nice day and up to this point this coffee is trending in some really positive directions. Day 23, back through the V60, and that's what was so interesting about this day was all of a sudden it took a turn as there was significantly more savoriness to the cup as on this day it offered what I would describe as being reminiscent of SpaghettiOs, that very strong tomato-like, tomato sauce-like attribute to this one. There's still a nice bit of sweetness, a little bit more of that candy cherry sense to it, but savoriness was notable enough to the point that it actually became the most dominant factor within this cup. So not entirely sure how that dramatically changed as much as it did, but we continue on to day 26 as we opted for the Chemex, and given that it had such a positive first impression with the Chemex, I was hoping that maybe this would return the coffee back to that initial impression, though this time it felt slightly hollow as there was a pretty lacking aspect of this one. The most pronounced characteristic was a very soft, savory, tea-like component to it. Even the brightness, savoriness, herbality, they all felt toned down as I felt maybe this is a possible brewing error. Nonetheless, we're going to continue on to day 29 as I wanted to try it through the Chemex one more time to see if that was a brewing error. And it's been inconsistent as now it's offering more of the candied sweet aspects with the berry components once again being a little bit more pronounced, though there's still a fair bit of the savory and uh, herbal aspects as the secondary components, even a very slight peachiness. So there were a lot of positives that I took away as it seemed to be headed back on the right track. But one of the reasons I enjoyed this coffee so much through the Chemex the first time was because it did seem to tone down and lack a little bit of those savory and herbal components, at least relative to this experience that we'd had. 
day 32 decided to go back to the v60 try it one more time and this was the best that had been up to this point so i said okay i guess even though it's been kind of close we're going to opt with this brew method as there was much more of the candied sweetness present yet again plenty of the kenyan like brightness a slight bit of a caramelized aspect to it savoriness felt toned down still a moderate amount of the herbality as well as plenty of citrus but i said you know what the trade-off for the sweetness is worth it for me Let's continue on to our final note, day 35 through the V60, and it was interesting as we were having a little bit more inconsistency with the cup as this time it felt a little bit more savory than sweet, only slightly and moderately candied with the red fruit brightness being the most pronounced characteristic. So a lot of those tart berry components, I can't recall whether or not they had any sort of uh, like tart berry note listed on here, red currant, okay, yeah. So not surprising, that's a very Kenyan-like note to have on a coffee. Citrus is also present, but a little less defined as the savoriness is quite well pronounced. Still a fair bit of herbality. I don't think I could ever shake that throughout the entirety of this one. So this one was a pretty okay day, but we are going to go ahead and move on now to the tasting wheel. So you can't see what we're getting. And we have quite a few level fours. So let's go through those and we'll start with the finish level four. So once again, as I always say, when it comes to wash processed Kenyan coffees, if the finish is not reaching that level four, then something went very wrong within the coffee, minimum of that level four. Don't really have too much to add on to that as it was fully expected. It does have a little bit of that lingering aspect to it. Though that kind of weird day that we had where everything was so muted and toned down, that hollow Chemex day, I could actually say that the finish would have been at that level three. So whatever happened on that day, it didn't play a role in the overall tasting wheel, but I think it was worth noting that yes, yeah, something definitely went wrong on that day. Sweetness, level four. So I decided kind of at the last moment to swap that out as I said, okay, the sweetness is somewhere between that three and the four, but when I was making that tasting wheel, I said, you know what, there's enough of the candied aspect to it. I feel like this coffee has improved enough to justify that level four. And when we discuss one of the other notes in this tasting wheel, you'll see where the balance kind of came with that. But yeah, level four sweetness. It was surprisingly more sweet than initially expected and it continued to remain for the most part sweet minus the slightly inconsistent days that we had had throughout. Instead of being level four, yeah, and when I was discussing the natural processed Ethiopian coffee, I said that that one didn't have as much brightness as this one, but that's to be expected. We are working with a wash processed Kenyan coffee right here, and that was kind of the determining factor for that coffee. But I mean, it's going to be a level four for a Kenyan coffee. You're always going to be expecting that level of brightness from those coffees. Florality, level four. Uh, I don't think that they had any sort of floral note on here, but I do have to say it is a little bit more of those kind of red floral characteristics to it. So hibiscus is always the one that comes to mind. But given that there was so much of that herbal aspect to this one, I feel like that coupled with savoriness does kind of blend itself towards the floral profile of this coffee as that was something that was equally, if not more pronounced in some of the other characteristics of this coffee. We continue on to the berry fruit level four, and I'm really glad that they do have that red currant note listed on here because it tastes like a Kenyan coffee, and those are always those kind of bright, tart Kenyan components to them. And that's where the berry fruit comes in, as that was definitely very much present, and I don't really need to expand upon that. Citrus fruit level four, and I'm looking at these notes a lot. Yeah, lime, okay, makes a lot of sense. I said at one point that it was a little bit of that cherry limeade, which cherry, once again, another berry attribute within this one. But the lime on certain days I felt was very well defined, very well pronounced. And I think for the most part though, it was a little bit more on that generic citric tone to it as it was kind of uh, muddled with the brightness of this coffee. So citrus reached that level four, whether or not it was overly well defined or whether or not it was a little bit more generic, there was plenty of citrus, uh, plenty of brightness in this cup. And then we have uh, quite a few level threes. We'll actually start with the stone fruit level three. I'd mentioned that on certain Chemex days, there was a nice peachy aspect to this one. And on some of the V60 days as well, especially when we were making the tasting, I said, I think I can justify a level three. It may be a lower level three, but there's enough of a peachy aspect to this one that we'll just kind of put it there. And I think that it's enough to justify that mark. Uh, caramel, level three. I'd mentioned that there's a nice candied sweetness to this one, and that was probably my favorite part of this entire coffee is whenever you can get those Kenyan coffees to have an ever so slight candied aspect to them, then I'm going to enjoy them significantly more. So having that and the sweetness at the level four was nice in that sense. Savoriness level four, that's where one of the really big factors in this coffee is going to be at play. Yeah, it had a little bit of that tomato-like components to it. And specifically, I think I was maybe thinking back to that SpaghettiOs-like day, that very strong, intense, savory tomato-like aspect. 
But even in addition to that, it did have a little bit of a savory tea-like component to it, a savory herbal component to it as well. So there are a lot of savory factors within this one. And usually when it comes to Kenyan coffees, it's a victory for me to have that down at the level two. With this one right here, I would say it was at the level three, if not on the higher side of level three, but it's not necessarily all in that tomato-like sense. It also offers some other things, but it was also that tomato, which is why the cleanliness does score that level three. And that was a little bit of a tricky one because I said on certain days, maybe a very generous lower side of the level four. Oftentimes I'm going to kind of punish the Kenyan coffees on the clarity, the cleanliness because of that tomato-like aspect. And given that that was very pronounced within this coffee, I could not justify putting it at that level four mark. And even on the days where it was at level four, I still felt like that was slightly generous as it really seemed to be marred ever so slightly by the savory aspects of this coffee. So that's those two things, savoriness and cleanliness, both at the level three. Final thing worth discussing is the body at the level three. And as I had also mentioned in that natural processed Ethiopian coffee review, I was comparing these two coffees side by side and I said, they have about equal body, interestingly enough, though this one had slightly more than that natural processed Ethiopian, of course, fully expected, but they were pretty close, close enough to score that level three mark, but this had that classic Kenyan juicy body to it. So that's about it. As I'm looking at this tasting wheel, I do think it's a pretty good representation of what I was getting from this coffee. All right, so my overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee. Interestingly enough, this one is so, so close to being one of the more enjoyable Kenyan coffees I'd had this year. If we could have just toned down the savory aspects of this one, then I think I would have truly enjoyed this one way more than initially expected going into it. And there were some really nice days of this coffee as well. So I took a lot of positives away from this one. I'm going to go back to what I said in the natural processed Ethiopian review. I really appreciate Sweven for what they are because I do hope that more British coffee roasters go in this direction. That's one of the main reasons why they initially caught my attention as well in the first place was because I did note that, hey, this isn't the much more developed profile that so many of the British English coffee roasters tend to offer. So having that in this coffee as well was another really nice positive trait and characteristic for it. And for that reason, I can safely say that this is one of the more enjoyable Kenyan coffees I've had from an English coffee roaster. So plenty of takeaways, positive takeaways from this coffee as well as this coffee roaster, even if this isn't going to end up being one of my favorite Kenyans that we've discussed on this channel anytime recently. The type of person I would suggest this coffee to, uh, if you're in England and you're looking for a coffee roaster that's much more on the modern side of things, then I will continue to suggest them as I think that a lot of the things that they're doing are very interesting. They do offer some very interesting coffees as well. And while this one right here, the only thing that really stood out to me that caught my attention about this coffee is I have not really heard of uh, Gicharori. And in addition to that, it is just an SL28, SL34 coffee. So it's got some very interesting qualities to it. And I think of those aspects of of the kind of more modern Kenyan coffee that has those brighter components to it, that savoriness, a lot of the expected Kenyan characteristics are what appeal to you. And you are in England, then I think this is a pretty good fit. And even if you're not in England, then I still think that they're a coffee roaster worth checking out as I think they're doing some very interesting things. I think for the most part, that's the best way I can leave this review. If you by chance had an opportunity to try this coffee, I'd love to know your thoughts and impressions of it as well. If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. This right here has been a review of the Gicharari Wash Processed Kenya from Sweven Coffee. Thank you for watching.